Hello, this is Ari and Caroline from University of Michigan's MCDB 427 Molecular Biology class, and we are going to be discussing the GLIS cassette. The GLIS cassette is a common molecular biology tool used to quantify transcription in vitro. Things that affect transcription levels are easily studied using a GLIS cassette, such as promoters, promoter elements, transcription factors, and activators. You might be wondering, hey, why is it called a GLIS cassette? Well, in this assay, a long stretch of nucleotides that make up the GLIS cassette lack guanine, hence the G. As you can see on our image, the DNA in this plasmid is double-stranded. On the top strand, there is no guanine in the long stretch of nucleotides. Therefore, the bottom strand lacks cytosine, the C nucleotide you may be familiar with. We will refer to the top strand, the one lacking Gs, as the non-template strand, and the bottom strand as the template strand. You may recall that in transcription, RNA polymerase reads the template strand and synthesizes a nucleic acid strand that is complementary to the template strand. Remember that RNA polymerase incorporates ribonucleotides into its RNA product, not deoxyribonucleotides, which make up DNA. The product of transcription, the mRNA transcript, therefore has a similar sequence to the non-template strand, but instead of thymine, RNA has uracil. While it is common to use a G-list cassette, you can perform a similar experiment using a C-list cassette or the less common A or T-list cassettes. In this assay, we rely on simple biological mechanisms to give very useful and reliable information. I will lay out an overview of how it works. First, we incorporate a promoter into a pre-constructed plasmid. This promoter will be located just upstream relative to the G-list cassette, a stretch of nucleotides lacking guanine. Now, let's set up a GLIS cassette reaction so you can understand how it measures the amount of transcription. Once the promoter is inserted into the plasmid, we add RNA polymerase. This is an in vitro reaction so we can control what ribonucleotides RNA polymerase can use for transcription. We just supply RNA polymerase with CTP, ATP, and alpha 32P labeled UTP, but no GTP. We allow for transcription to occur. As RNA polymerase reads the template strand and incorporates complementary ribonucleotides into the growing transcript. For example, a stretch of DNA on the template strand reading TAG would result in a transcript reading AUC, since A is complementary to T, U is complementary to A, only relevant to RNA as we have here, and C is complementary to G. Should RNA polymerase run into a C on the template strand, it would attempt to incorporate a G into the growing transcript. However, by not supplying any GTP, we would prevent elongation of the transcript. The RNA polymerase is therefore unable to continue and the transcript is released. We then take the RNA products, load them on a gel, and do electrophoresis. Next, we do autoradiography or phosphor imaging and we can see how much radioactive mRNA was made. On the audio radiogram, we can visualize and quantify the amount of transcription products. We could have set up this experiment using different promoters, the same promoter but mutated, or the same promoter with an activator present to see how these changes affect transcription. This is what a GLIS cassette looks like when it is used on a plasmid. In the plasmid shown, there is a GLIS cassette sequence followed by DNA downstream that has a G on its non-template strand. Upstream of the GLIS cassette is the promoter. Please note that on the bottom graphic, the top strand is the template strand, written 3' to 5', prime, which is unlike most other images you've seen of DNA. This still represents a GLIS cassette. Now that you know how a GLIS cassette can be used and why its information is valuable, let's take a look at an example that was actually done. The GLIS cassette assay was used to observe mediator's effect on transcription. Mediator is a protein complex that is necessary for optimal activation of transcription in vivo. This next experiment we will show you was a real experiment conducted using a GLIS cassette to show mediator's effect on transcription activity with an activator present. Scientists inserted a CYCI promoter and a GAL4 binding site just upstream of the GLIS region. GAL4, a known activator, binds the GAL4 binding site and increases transcription by recruiting transcription machinery that make up the pre-initiation complex. In this specific experiment, they used a GAL4 VP16 activator hybrid. This hybrid has the DNA binding domain of GAL4 and the activating domain of VP16. From now on, we will refer to this hybrid protein as activator. Scientists added different amounts of mediator, measured in micrograms, to test its effect on the amount of transcription. Let's break this gel down lane by lane. 
We can see that in lane one, there was no activator nor mediator present in the transcription reaction. A faint band on the gel, which is difficult to see, indicates that a basal level of transcription occurred. Looking at lane two, we can see a much darker band, which indicated that more RNA products were made in this reaction. Lane two shows that addition of the activator increased transcription. As we look at lanes 7 through 10, more RNA transcripts are being made. In those lanes, mediator and the activator were both present in the reaction. Looking at lanes 7 to 10, we can see that the concentration of mediator used in the reaction is increasing. Since the bands got darker from lanes 7 through 10, this indicates that more RNA transcripts were made as more mediator was added in the presence of the activator. To test to see if mediator could increase transcription without an activator present, they performed the same reaction as in lanes 7 through 10 but without the activator. In lanes 3 through 6, we can see only faint bands which indicate that there is very little transcription occurring. This led scientists to believe that mediator only increases transcription when there is an activator present. With this in mind, the gel bands in lanes 3 through 6 should appear identical since a mediator does not affect transcription amounts when no activator is present. This graph correlates to a replicate experiment and is another way to represent the amount of transcription that occurred with activator and without activator. The band's radioactivity was quantified and the points on the lines indicate how much transcription occurred. The x-axis is the concentration of mediator added and the y-axis represents the amount of transcription. You can see that when no activator is present, there is a constant amount of transcription as the concentration of mediator increases. This line is blue and is labeled basal on the graph. This shows that while transcription can occur at a low level without activators added, the mediator does not affect transcription when no activators are present. Hence, why lanes 3 through 6 on the gel should have had identical bands. When the activator is present and scientists increase the concentration of mediator, there is an increasing amount of transcription, as shown by the almost linear rising green line, labeled activated on the graph. These results show that mediator affects transcription when there is activator present. In conclusion, when an activator is not present, increasing the amount of mediator does not affect transcription. However, when an activator is present, increasing the concentration of mediator does increase the amount of transcription. Make sure to remember these three things. One. The GLIS cassette studies the transcriptional strength of promoters in vitro. Two, it's called the GLIS cassette because there are no Gs in the non-template strand. And three, this assay was used to study the effect of mediator on transcription. Thank you very much for watching and go blue.